Well, everyone, thank you again for joining us for today's session, LinkedIn Profile Optimization, and some hacks that are going to help you expand your contact network and really get the most out of your LinkedIn user experience. And being that LinkedIn is fairly a, um, a more recognizable tool that we have all been able to come and, and use in multiple areas of our careers. Um, it's also a great way, as many of you have come to learn, to engage with professional development activity through LinkedIn Learning. Um, so we'll really connect some of the dots today and give you some essential tips for optimizing the profile and really making sure that you are getting most out of the user experience and also how you can begin expanding um, your contact network with those who share similar academic interests and career interests um, outside of the Webster University network as well. When really thinking about job seekers and looking at tools and how job seekers perceive what tools are going to be the most beneficial to them and really in any aspect of making a profound impact or a dent on some of the key areas that you want to be reputable for within your own contact network, LinkedIn is arguably the most um, efficient way that you can have all of those um, uh, pieces of information about your professional self and have conversations with people in and outside of your network in such a public way. Um, but also as just a prof professionally centric platform gives you this space for you to join LinkedIn groups um, and have other sorts of connectivity to um, idea sharing and information from those who are going to be able to give you some more innovation and creativity to make some efficiencies in ways that we are doing things here at our university. So there's so much benefit to using LinkedIn in ways that you can really optimize the profile and user experience to get the most out of uh, the system. I have some tips for profile optimization and many of the activities that I use with students and alumni who participate in our broadcasts um, come from the Muse, which is a career-centric blog, job board, um, a career coaching tool for many. Um, and they have a lot of very cool perspectives from industry professionals across almost every single industry. So a lot of what I gather um, and connect to students is, is um, reputable from some of these key industry leaders. And these um, tips for optimization come from an article that I've um, found and, and have used previously um, from the news, the 31 best LinkedIn tips for job seekers. Now, um, this presentation is not about job seeking, but it is about personal branding and profile optimization. And there's always opportunity for you to use LinkedIn and other um, networking sites to not only communicate who you are professionally, but also to establish credibility as a professional in your field. Um, the information that you are putting out there about yourself or information that you are making um, a comment on or sharing to your LinkedIn profile feed um, says a lot about who you are and does communicate or reinforce your credibility? Do people want to read and listen to what you have to say? And the answer to that should always be yes, because you are a professional, you have great perspective, you have wonderful insight into things that maybe some other connected professionals do not. So really focusing on LinkedIn and how it can constantly be um, a working tool for you to utilize in any aspect of your career is going to be a wonderful way for you to prioritize how you want um, your intended audience to perceive you. Telling your story and building that story through your personal brand is overall what LinkedIn is going to be a good foundation for. Your Google resume or your virtual resume should begin with any public um, uh, skill, qualification, experience um, that you have included in that profile, in your LinkedIn profile. So looking at LinkedIn as 
the starting place where you want anybody who is seeking um, advice or insights from somebody who is a leader within your field is likely going to happen with LinkedIn before any other sort of networking platform. And knowing exactly who that audience is, your audience and how you will be able to attract them to your profile comes from any of the fill-in sections of the profile. Most notably, the skills and endorsements section of your profile should be littered with keywords and phrases that align to your strengths. So if you're somebody in academic advising, there's emphasize within the skills and endorsement section of that profile, such as academic advising, maybe you're specializing in um, international, um, ac international student academic advising, that can be listed as, an, as a skill. Maybe you are somebody who is really um, uh, accelerated use of a specific tool within your area. We've all become more adept to Zoom and Microsoft Teams and some additional video conferencing software programs. Those are skill areas that show that we're relevant in this virtual format. We understand how to navigate some of those areas of technology with, with proficiency and can do so um, in ways that are going to um, reinforce that we have these areas and value um, and are considered subject matter experts um, within these different areas. So very good space to fill in as much information as you can, at least 50 or so skills. Um, I believe that's the max amount that you can include. And you would be surprised. Um, um, they will definitely um, sneak up on you because you'll be putting skills in and thinking that there's no way you can possibly have 50 skills that you are going to be able to list in that profile. But the algorithm um, on the back end from previous information you've already included within your profile will recommend some skills that maybe you would not have thought of that you can just quick add to your profile. There are some skills that I just say, you know, we're all mid to more maybe advanced career and cer certain skills we may not need to emphasize within our skills section like PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. Um, and maybe we need to switch some of those out with Microsoft Teams or Microsoft um, uh, SharePoint or uh, Microsoft Outlook as a means to organize information and keep our, our daily schedules on track. So thinking about what you can switch out, what natural inferences you would like your audience to be able to conclude that you have developed skill or proficiency in is, is great, but sometimes just listing that directly in the skill section is going to be a good use of that space in uh, your LinkedIn profile. You can also order um, and list those skills in a specific way that you would like your whoever is going to be reviewing your profile to know that you are prioritizing some skill areas as a way of like these are my strongest skills that are essential to my overall um, um, occupation and, and this is what I am very reputable for so I am open to assisting anybody with developing these as strengths in the future. Um, and, and a lot of that also comes through how many people are going to endorse you potentially for some of these skills and the degree into which you are perceived by that person endorsing you as a, as a uh, subject matter expert within that specific um, skill area. So thinking about that could be very important and kind of placing it intentionally on your profile will be very strategic. Working in those keywords throughout your entire profile is a great strategy. Um, anywhere from your public um, facing uh, LinkedIn headline, uh, LinkedIn may default your headline to be your current job title. Um, and it may also default your current uh, or most recent completed education um, institution. So if you have an opportunity to customize um, with any specific keywords or phrases, even in your, um, even in your uh, job title on your, um, uh, or your 
your headline, which would be defaulted as your job title, that's a good way to incorporate some key buzzwords uh, that you feel really represents uh, you know, the skills or the overall persona that you want to have publicly um, and professionally. Completing your profile is fairly um, easy to do if you have your resume readily available right there to kind of reference and cut some important pieces of information from past work experiences, especially if you're looking at ways that you want to fill in sections that maybe you don't necessarily think about until you see those blank spaces um, and those different sections of the LinkedIn uh, profile, like certifications, licenses, um, which if you've completed LinkedIn learning courses, you were likely prompted to add some of those to your profile. But there may be some credentials that you have that are outside of LinkedIn learning that maybe you've never put into the system. In the education section of LinkedIn, you can also include a listing of completed coursework um, that will be more of a drop down section if somebody clicks on your educational experience. There are other areas that could be filled in in the education section to make that more complete, including any activities that you've had um, um, engaged with while you were a student. Um, grade point average um, out of its scale. So for instance, if it's on a grade scale of a 10.0 and your GPA was a 9.0, it's good to make reference that that was a 9.0 out of a 10.0 grading scale. Um, um, any other areas of education like clubs, activities, those sorts of things are always good ways to showcase involvement and engagement while you were studying. Um, it's more important and more essential to really though focus on your experiences that you've had through work activities. And really focusing on the top sections of your profile is going to have the most engagement from your reader. So the summary at the top, um, introducing yourself to your audience. Who are you? Um, being very personal using those first person pronouns. My name is John Link. I'm a creative in higher education who has a unique skill set in uh, career services, university teaching, instructional design, and educational technology. I'm able to kind of summarize a little bit of who I am and then go maybe a little bit deeper into my personal mission or how I enjoy building um, inclusivity into all I do or the atmosphere that I create when working with students. And that can really be eye-opening for a lot of people when you're focusing on who your intended reader is going to be when they're reviewing your profile. And really looking at how you can make some customization to your profile in ways that anybody who is going to be searching for you, or if you're including a direct link to your profile leading on your resume, how it can be streamlined with other areas of your um, uh, personal brand, like the, uh, the, the customized URL handle to LinkedIn. LinkedIn will default this long um, uh, public URL, but what I recommend is when you go into your profile, you can click edit profile and then somewhere up there in the right hand corner, it's going to say edit public profile and public URL. And when you edit your public URL, you can make that um, uh, resemble some combination of your first and last name. Um, if you're like me, I have my handle as the same as my email address handle so that there's a lot of consistency in the way that that is listed um, in different parts of my other professional brand components. So thinking about that can be very intentional. Um, and it's also a good way to make things streamlined so that it's not just so lengthy um, when you are potentially sharing your LinkedIn profile with, with a, uh, a networking connection. Uh, adding a cover photo that reflects you is a good way to make your profile stand out as not too many people use um, a public um, LinkedIn uh, uh, cover backdrop on their profile. Webster has a variety of different photos within their stock images that could be used. Some pretty 
photos of architecture around campus that could be a good backdrop to have on uh, your as a cover photo. Um, and then also, I mean, they have some default photos that could be utilized as well. And while those are defaults um, that you can uh, stock images that LinkedIn has available for you to use, those are better than not having one at all. So I just recommend fiddling with your profile a little bit and having something up there um, to bring a little bit more personality or character to your, your profile. Choosing um, a professional picture or having one updated is a best practice to, to stay atop of. And um, you know, one thing that I've done for years, um, for well over a decade now outside of my role at Webster has been pageant um, uh, consulting and coaching. And um, one of my um, current um, um, clients that I've worked with is, is the current Miss Indiana, Tierra Taylor. Um, and we've always talked about how her professional headshots have always been so up to date that nobody, um, when she's been on stage, has had to guess if that's her or if it's been somebody else. And you should always want your professional photo to um, reflect you know, who you are and, and the way that you look. So if you're someone that always has their hair down, your hair shouldn't be pulled back in your professional photo. Um, if you're somebody who has their hair pulled back and it's always done up, then maybe your hair down in your LinkedIn profile picture would not be the best for you if that's not the way someone's going to consistently see you maybe on a Zoom call or in person. So thinking about some of those um, areas of detail when um, uh, choosing a, uh, a profile picture that represents the best version of yourself is, is, is good to consider when, when you're focusing on that part of your profile. Writing a headline, um, and I just went on um, a little tangent about this that is different than your current job title is great because everybody can say that they're, you know, a coordinator of academic services. Well, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot of what I do. It gives a job title, it's very generic, it sounds. But um, if you focus a little bit more on impact, um, specific key areas that you want someone to see in that headline, that could be a very, very fun way for you to just stand out um, among a crowd of others who don't necessarily do any sort of customizing of their profile headline. I know that um, my colleague and friend in the School of Communications, Trezette Dixon, who is the director of the internship program for the School of Communications, um, has long had a very um, um, great um, uh, title, if you will. And I, I know that that's evolved and changed since she's moved into her role in the School of Communications as um, the, the, the link or the connection between preparation and opportunity. Think about that. That makes you stop and think, huh, that, that's creative. And I even had to steal that for a while because my last name is Link and um, thought that that was just a neat, a neat pun on my last name, but also making it meaningful for the work that I do when uh, connecting students to our employer partners. So thinking about what creativity you would like to pour into that could be a, a great way for you to stand out. Completing your intro, um, there are multiple fill-in sections when you actually go in and edit your introduction, which could include identifying a country or region um, that you are specifically in, in the United States. Um, for instance, there's St. Louis, and then there's Greater St. Louis. Um, industry, there used to be very, um, th that used to not be a mandatory field. And if you're one of the lucky few, like I was, who didn't ever think about clicking on that edit button and, and going through and seeing what needed to be potentially um, updated, they now make you um, select an industry. So education and training, I think, is the industry that um, we would be um, considered in. Higher education may also be one of those newly added industry areas within academia that is important to kind of look into if that's been added yet. But focusing on that, your contact information, all of that information that you want anybody to see who is connected to you is optional. But 
if you can and you would like to complete that information, it just builds your overall profile strength. Using your summary wisely as your self-introduction is got prime real estate at the top of your LinkedIn profile and it sets the tone for all content that you will be referencing in the sections that follow. Um, so while your resume has historically been a document that is tailored to the type of industry or type of position that you will be using to apply for um, any employment opportunity or any other occasion where you would need a resume, um, your LinkedIn profile is also going to now more be streamlined to um, the type of professional activities that you want to be known for. So if all of your professional activities are within the same industry, it's great to have a comprehensive listing of that included on your LinkedIn profile, as you will see that grow as you get um, um, more work activities, more responsibilities, more credentials, your LinkedIn profile is definitely gonna grow. But um, it's also good to really focus on how you want um, to be more reputable or known for things that you are currently doing, not maybe things that you did 20 years ago that may have been in a different industry. So really focus on how you wanna tailor that content or scale back some of that content for positions that you previously had that may have been, uh, that may now be a bit dated um, uh, or necessary to emphasize and elaborate on further um, on LinkedIn. Making sure that you're able to use strong accomplishment driven descriptions and quantifying any of those responsibilities that you've had um, whenever possible in the uh, description section of each of your work experiences is going to, to indicate your effectiveness as somebody in your role. Um, and when showcasing your skills um, in all of these other sections of your document, you don't wanna just reinforce the exact same information that you've already highlighted in those other fill-in sections. You want to emphasize how effective you are in your role and really um, emphasize some specific achievements. Maybe you were able to increase revenue um, or you identified a new revenue stream that um, was something that assisted your office do X, Y, and Z. Or maybe you were able to secure funding for a grant that was able to provide access to um, uh, uh, scholarship aid to students in underrepresented, underserved communities. There's all kinds of things that you can really focus on when you're writing these descriptors. And you can always make adjustments to these as you go in and you know audit your current LinkedIn profile or you want to just add in or update some information um, as part of normal kind of maintenance of your personal brand. Using any links or media to those work experiences is, is a great way for you to increase profile strength. So for instance, if you're at the REG Academic Resource Center, a media link may be from a public facing Webster Today article that announces um, a new program that the REG ARC has been um, able to launch as part of a new initiative for student uh, retention. Well, that's a wonderful thing to just emphasize that there's been a feature, um, it's a professional publication, emphasizing this specific initiative and to be linked directly to that section of your profile. You can make updates or adjustments to those links as much as you need to or add as many as you would like to, to emphasize what some of those key areas are that you've maybe been able to showcase some work samples in. Um, so thinking about that creatively could be a great way um, for you to really stand out, especially if you're looking at showcasing those work artifacts that we know are very important to not just telling people that we've done this or that, but showing them and giving them a work sample is a great way to do that. Making your resume and your LinkedIn profile um, cohesive, um, everything should kind of seamlessly blend well together as I like to tell some of my students. It should be like you bought everything at the same store because it's part of the same collection. So thinking about 
your resume is a summary, your LinkedIn is a little bit more in-depth opportunity for you to elaborate on who you are professionally and provide some of those extra areas of experience and go a little bit deeper than you're able to in just such a limited one, two or three page resume. Um, so consistency there is, 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 is obviously what you are going to be shooting for and being as cohesive, cohesive as you can um, uh, in those different spaces where you're using your experiences as leverage for what you bring to the table is going to be a very valuable part um, of who you are in defining that personal brand. Making those licenses and certifications, as we mentioned at the start of this week, LinkedIn Learning allows you to add those publicly and you can reorder them, organize them in whichever way that you would like to. Um, and then other sources of credentialing, projects, volunteer experiences, accomplishments, awards, honors, recognitions, language proficiencies, all of those are fill-in sections in LinkedIn. And filling in as much of that information is going to increase your overall profile score. Touting your skills, and, and as I mentioned, skills um, are so important to emphasize in all facets of your LinkedIn profile, but really making sure that you're speaking to how strong um, and those, uh, how strong those skills are, the strength of those skills and the transfer of those skills to future opportunities, or your openness for volunteer board roles, say outside of the university, there's a professional association that you have membership in. These are certain skills that you may be able to not use extensively in your work activities because it's not part of your essential job. However, there are skills that you have that you can maybe leverage as part of a professional association through engagement in that, um, um, in any of those sort of volunteer roles. That's just another way, again, for you to reinforce specific messaging about yourself and touting those skills as a way to do it. Seeking out and giving recommendations, um, that's going to be a strategic way for any messaging or key skills and unique strengths that you have for others to emphasize that in any recommendation that they will be giving to you um, and giving them in return and, and writing about somebody's um, uh, uh, skills, strengths, your experience working with them, supervising them or being supervised by them is just a great way to kind of build a huge listing of reinforced messaging from the perspective of those who know you best. Linking your LinkedIn profile to your resume um, that's become more and more and more of a common uh, thing, especially if you are wanting to just emphasize that the resume is a summary um, and that you would like them to visit your LinkedIn profile to see even more information about who you are. That information um, linked to your, in the contact section of your resume is a wonderful space to entice them to click and go and see what additional information that you have included and learn a little bit more about things that you can't necessarily um, uh, showcase within the limited sections of your resume. The activity snapshot for LinkedIn, um, for LinkedIn users is public. Um, once you're connected to somebody, it's going to let them know like, um, uh, Trezette Dixon recently shared a post from Webster University, and maybe it's an article talking about um, the School of Communications student um, internship poster presentations, and we'll link to a video about that. Those are wonderful things to showcase and share or comment on. The more activity that you have, again, the more engagement, the more information you're sharing, the more that you're contributing to conversations, the more you are going to be looked at as somebody reputable within your specific area that you're um, in. And not speaking in a limited way with those that we are connected to within the Webster University Network, but people outside of the Webster University Network who may be leaning on people that like you who have that expertise and may be able to serve in some way as a, um, 
uh, someone to bounce ideas off of or somebody who may be able to contribute to conversations within a LinkedIn group or any other sort of activity um, that you're seeing in your um, LinkedIn community. So thinking about that and really being important and uh, focusing more on the activity um, that you would like is going to give you a little bit more leverage when you're looking at ways to stay and maintain um, uh, professional engagement. Uh, being um, intentional about who you are connecting to, um, making connections that make sense to you and focusing on people who share similar academic interests um, is where you want that priority to be. So build those connections, connect with people that you work with at the university, but also make connections to those who you are potentially um, going to learn from or be able to um, share some mutually beneficial information with at other institutions as well. Using network to learn and grow as you know, the focus on this week has been really leveraging the tools that you have access to through LinkedIn Learning and really using LinkedIn to not just learn from LinkedIn Learning, but also through some of the networking connections that you have. There may be some very insightful information or perspective from connections that are public because they're sharing information to the feed. That's something for you to learn and grow and evolve from. Maybe it's a place that you would not have learned um, a specific piece of information um, before, but you've been able to really rely on some key people from LinkedIn um, as a source of news or trending information within your field. That's a great way to contribute to conversation, but it's an awesome way for you to grow and learn along the way. You know, there's no you know, right or wrong way to begin posting information to LinkedIn publicly, it's just you have to start. You have to start somewhere. That may be, there's a really cool article from our subscription to um, the Chronicle of Higher Education, and it's something that is relevant to not just maybe Webster, but specifically your academic unit or your department that you are sharing to LinkedIn and are trying to gather some thoughts from those that you are connected with based off of the topic. Um, maybe you're summarizing your perspective on it and inviting others to do so as well. There's always a good place to start and it's now. It's whenever you feel comfortable and um, however you want to get started, it's just important to just get started. Joining LinkedIn groups and requesting to join LinkedIn groups, some of them are private, um, is community-based and could be a very useful space for you to network with those who are outside of the university. It's also a good space for you to get some inside information about things that you're wanting to be a little bit more in the loop with. So be mindful and look potentially at some uh, different groups that are aligned to your specific interests. And only um, looking at LinkedIn when you're potentially job seeking is not the best way to use the platform. LinkedIn is a networking um, platform. It's also a good space for you to showcase your talents um, and what makes you unique. So thinking about as much activity as you can have or engagement that you can have with the platform throughout the year um, is going to give you the most bang um, for your user experience um, when using all of the tools within the system. So I'm gonna pause, I know, I believe there's been at least one question that's come through and I wanna make sure that I'm giving you all space to um, ask any questions. Um, um, so I'm going to allow you to do so now. And you can ask the question in the chat box or you can unmute yourself as well. Hi, John. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, do you, will you, can we schedule a time to meet with you to, to maybe personally one on one go over our LinkedIn and maybe have you look it over or something and help us with specific language tailored to our specific roles? Sure. Yeah, I'm always willing to assist anybody um, strengthen. Um, the way that they want their personal brand to come across through LinkedIn. 
Um, and that's something that I'm definitely open to um, coordinating with you and, and focusing on how that could be um, um, a good use of um, uh, your time to get the most out of our conversation. So definitely, Martha. So John, I have a question about updating. Yeah. So when we update our information on LinkedIn, sometimes I find that if I update something, it sends an alert um, to others that I'm connected with. Is there a way to update your profile without like alerting others? Like if you wanted to change your titles or anything else on your profile? Yeah, I was recently working with, um, an alum who had a question about that. They were recently laid off and wanted to um, make some changes to their LinkedIn profile, but didn't necessarily want to, want to announce to the world that they um, ended their job without listing that they've started a new job as well. Um, when you are making those updates to your LinkedIn profile, while you can make certain updates on a mobile device, I strongly recommend that you use it from a browser on a laptop or desktop computer, because some of the um, things that you may not necessarily notice on, say, your mobile device if you're making some quick updates, like a notify my network of these changes, um, may not populate on the mobile device. So um, that's a setting. You can notify your network if you want them to be up to date with any information that changes um, for you know, a specific job title. Um, maybe you've changed a job. Maybe you've um, announced that you've started a new role, but you don't necessarily want all of this attention or you're confusing people because you've started maybe a volunteer role or a committee role at the university. And now people think that you're in completely a different area of the university because LinkedIn told them that you started a new position as a X, Y, and Z. So thinking about that is going to be um, a good way for you to make sure that any settings that you have to make those announcements about any updates that you've recently made to your profile should um, you know be made from like a desktop or a laptop uh, computer. That's great. Thank you for all those wonderful tips. I took a lot of notes. Thank you. What other questions do you have? John Link, I, I do know that I received a couple of uh, phone calls and, and messages this week about how the LinkedIn learning connects directly with your LinkedIn profile. And I know you discussed that a little bit. Is there any way to, to show a, a, a demonstration of that or show how that works real, real quick here? Sure, yeah. Um, so let me stop sharing this and I'll reshare using my own LinkedIn so you can see a little bit of information on the back end of the LinkedIn learning portal. <clears throat> so thank you for being patient with me as I get there. My internet speed catches up to my words, what I'm telling all of you. All right. It's so funny, for some reason now my LinkedIn um, learning is not showing up. So give me one second. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, John Link, so. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just wanna make sure I can pull that up so that we can see, there we go. So what you're looking at right now is if you have logged in as a user to LinkedIn Learning, you should be greeted with something very similar um, to what you're seeing here. In LinkedIn Learning, you will be able to sync your personal LinkedIn account um, so that any coursework that you've completed can be then um, listed publicly to your uh, LinkedIn account. However, 
you're probably thinking, well, isn't that obvious? Like that's exactly, you know, what you've been telling us and, you know, why would somebody not want to do that? Some people that use LinkedIn Learning don't have LinkedIn as a they don't use LinkedIn as a personal account, so they don't have a LinkedIn account. And you can use LinkedIn Learning without having a LinkedIn account because of the single sign-on. Um, that's why if you recall or you participated in Monday's um, uh, learning about LinkedIn Learning presentation, um, we recommend if you have a LinkedIn per profile that you do sync your LinkedIn profile with LinkedIn Learning so that you can um, have that badging component when completing a course. However, you don't need to do that. So that's just point of clarification here. So when I'm going to LinkedIn Learning and I want to look at, say, any skills, um, skill-based courses that I've completed or I'm currently in progress with, um, you're going to see a whole lot of information um, based off of things that you may have clicked on that you never intended to complete, but you just wanted to get a preview of. That's why I have about 37 courses here. Um, they're just um, courses that I may have picked up on or just wanted to learn a little bit about. Maybe I'm going to be using them in the classroom, but either way, it just gives me that history. But down over here, it's going to give me um, learning history um, based off of courses that I've completed at the university. So let's say that you were confused at the very end of your completed course and you don't know if you have added it to your public profile or not, and you wanna make sure that it's included there. When you go into learning history, you can click on more. And then right down here, there's a link that says add to, to your, uh, sorry, add on your profile. When you click on your profile, it's going to open up to your current LinkedIn profile and you're going to be able to see in your licenses and certifications, all of the LinkedIn learning courses that you may have taken and any additional areas of license and certification that you added. So you'll see the one that I just clicked on, executive coaching, is now listed on my profile, just to make sure it was there. I can edit it if I want to. Maybe um, there are some um, um, certification courses that I just no longer want to list. I can delete those. Um, whatever you need to do, you can make sure that that is updated um, on your profile. But again, just making sure that the information, um, if, if you don't know, if you use single sign-on for instance, and now you're not sure like how to go back there, just go to your learning history and then sync your profile and you'll be able to make that addition um, for that course, that completed course um, to your profile. Now, if you're one of those people like me and you're like, no, I completed that course and it still says it's in progress. Well, then you didn't complete it because if it's completed, it'll say complete it and it will allow you to then add that to your profile. So be mindful of that as well. Only completed courses, you can add these licenses and certifications um, to your profile in. There's also um, a really cool thing that I want to mention. Um, I don't, okay, down here. So in skills and in, can you all see my screen right here where it says skill, take skill quiz? Yes, we can. Okay, just making sure. Um, you can take a skill quiz. Um, skill quizzes are generated from uh, LinkedIn um, learning administrators and other professionals who are subject matter experts in specific technical skill areas. For instance, if you wanted to take a skill quiz on Microsoft Word, and you're like me who did that and failed it miserably um, and then feel embarrassed, then you can do that. Um, uh, the skill quiz will indicate even a little bit more of a special badge on your skill areas that you have passed and completed a standardized skill quiz in that specific area. Um, there's not a skill quiz for every single skill that LinkedIn has. Um, the skill quizzes that they have are more technical. So they will have one for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Teams, uh, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, those 
more um, technical platforms and skill areas will have skill quizzes. Um, but you can definitely use those um, as a, also a way to really showcase um, some very specific strengths that you have in skill areas that you want your audience to know that you have, um, that you have exhibited strength in. And again, like I mentioned, your skills, you can add at least, I believe, 50 of them, and people can begin endorsing you for those skills. Um, and those infer a little bit of strength. You can reorganize them. They're typically um, already going to be organized in different areas, like, for instance, industry knowledge. All of these skills right here um, are industry knowledge deemed by what industry I selected in LinkedIn on the back end. So um, all these other additional skills will be categorized in, in different areas as well. Good question, Mr. Justin. Thank you, Mr. John Link. Appreciate that. Um, do you just wanna be conscious of the, of the hour here? It's about four minutes till happy hour. Um, so <laughs> if there are any other questions, please feel free to, to throw those out there right now. Um, but do appreciate the presentation, John. It was, it was great. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, John.